From nationalreview.com, media declares end of internet as we know it after net neutrality repeal. This story is from a week ago, and there's a reason I've been sitting on it for a week. So that I could say, I told you so, to all of the chicken littles of the net neutrality debate who said that if we repeal net neutrality, and by we, of course, they mean the, uh, the FCC, then it will be the end of the internet as we know it. You will have to pay more for sites that are more expensive for the... Tr I, I, I can't even remember. It was just... What, what were they saying? It was so silly. If we, if, if, if we don't have net neutrality, you're, you're going to have to pay just for, for like basic access. Like the, I mean, it, it, was just, it was like the silliest, irrational, just in denial. And this is, this is why they don't teach economics in government schools. Because they need you to fall for this bullshit. Now, in this case, we see the government actually going away from the, the position of economic control, which is what net neutrality is. Forcing internet service providers to follow specific government rules that restrict their ability to serve the needs of the market. And there is uh, you know, a sort of grain of legitimacy here in the same sense that there's a grain of legitimacy to, to socialism, to communism, that yes, you can steal from people, give it to others, and some people will be grateful for that. But the truth of the matter is that free markets, free exchange, a voluntary system, a nonviolent system that respects self-ownership, is, is the one that is going to promote the most wealth, productivity, and human happiness. And the same is true about internet service as it is for anything else. So what we had under net neutrality was a kind of socialized internet. And there wasn't some huge calamitous effect. Although I you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Hold on a second. Bear with me. I, I think I can extrapolate this and, and like we can we, let, let's try to blame some human deaths on government imposing net neutrality. Um, but first, let's get into the story and the history here. Uh, media outlets have raised the alarm about the repeal of net neutrality, which took effect on Monday. That's a week ago. Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai initially introduced the Restoring Internet Freedom Order, which repeals the Obama-era Open Internet Order Net Neutrality Rules. It was passed by a vote of the SEC in December. Now, this was a huge distraction issue. Because like I said, it, it wasn't that significant of all the things that government fucks up although i like i said i will i will make the case i will connect this to real human deaths this was one that was way overplayed and of course it was from a lot of the political grandstanding of people saying oh no we have to have net neutrality otherwise the little guy's going to get squeezed out you know we have to have socialism otherwise people are going to starve in the streets when you know the reality is the opposite is true if you have socialism you end up with people starving in the streets so, CNET, on Monday, as the repeal took effect, said, quote, The internet as we know it may not exist. TechCrunch, net neutrality is officially dead today, but the fight to revive it lives on. The main headline on CNN.com, after December's vote, The end of the internet as we know it. Net neutrality imposed heavy regulations on internet service providers, classifying them as public utilities. Critics said that the rules choked companies like popular streaming services by regulating how they present content to consumers. Those pushing for the rules argue that control of the internet should not be left to the whims of private companies. No, they should be left to the whims of dictators and government bureaucracies. Yeah! Pius called the Obama-era rules heavy-handed and has remained firm in his conviction that less regulation is the best path to a more free and open internet. Which really if they taught economics in high schools, would go without saying. As Pi said in December, following today's vote, Americans will still be able to access the websites they want to visit. They will still be able to enjoy the services they want to enjoy. There will still be cops on the beat guarding a free and open internet. This is the way things were prior to 2015, and this is the way they will be once again. So 2015 to 2018, three years, now, a lot can happen in three years. And by that, I mean a lot of progress, a lot of adaptation, 
a lot of increase in the quality and distribution of services provided. So, does the internet save lives? I think it would be hard to say no. Because thanks to the internet being on all of our phones and all of our pockets, we have this incredible tool that has the wealth of human information all available at our fingertips. We can call an ambulance, we can look up medical advice, we can uh, treat illnesses ourselves instead of going to the doctors, we can, uh, there is a wealth of information here. And, And even just in the logistics and the fact that it creates prosperity. It keeps people out of destitution. And and as much as you might say, well, in the United States, we've already enjoyed most of these benefits, of course, they're still coming. But in the rest of the world, there's still a long ways to go for internet penetration to really have touched every human being on this planet, for everybody to enjoy the benefits of this technology. So three years of the internet not being able to grow based on resources being allocated as people interacting peacefully, also known as the free market, sees fit, has consequences. Three years of stifled, slightly held back internet development. Now, here, maybe in the United States, all I have to bitch about is that my, uh, my Wi-Fi is not that fast, that my phone service on, on Verizon sucks a lot of the time, that I still get throttled for data, but for those people on the margins whose lives are affected by these little changes, three years of stifling development of the internet could mean not getting life-saving information, could mean not making enough money to pay for medical treatment, could mean not making enough money to make ends meet. And yeah, maybe I'm, I'm again, like I said at the beginning of this segment, blowing things way out of proportion, but if you want to tell me that the sky is falling because the government isn't regulating the internet with as heavy a hand, yeah, you really need some help getting perspective on this. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.